26, 2015, 7 p.m. Our invocation tonight will be given to us by Sherry Castillo. Father, thank you, Lord, for this day and the opportunity to serve you. Bestow upon us your goodness and grace and deliver us from evil. Bless the leaders of the community. May they be righteous, courteous, and bring unity to all. Forgive us our sins and guide us in your footsteps. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We have established a quorum, Councilman Rodriguez, Councilman Guerrero, Councilman Ortiz, and Councilman Tejada. <coughs> Councilman Nieto will now be joining us this evening. Everyone will please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and the Texas Pledge. <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. Nation, under God, with liberty and justice for all. Under the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Okay, before we begin, do we have any citizens' comments? <coughs> For the record, you've got a presentation tonight, you've got an action item on the extravaganza. And I just have some comments on that. First off, I have no problem with extravaganza. I do have a problem with the city monitoring and running. Oh, okay. Do over. As I was saying, uh, I don't think that the extravaganza is a thing that the city should sponsor. I see in the action items that it's directing city employees to work on that. We're talking about expenditure of up to motel tax dollars. But once you put city employees on it, you're talking about more rent tax dollars. So I don't think city employees should be working on that. You have in the past established a committee to oversee and recommend how you would spend your hotel motel tax. I think that would be a much better place to send this item to see if it passes muster with that committee rather than having direction coming out of the council. Uh, if you really need to go forward with doing something here, I think it needs to be a financial decision. And if you want to make a financial decision, in my mind, you can go back and look at the profit loss on each time that this has happened. And you also can go back and look at the sales tax revenues and hotel motel tax revenues for the period where the extravagance have happened to make sure that you've actually benefited the city by putting more people heads to beds and more dollars here. That's all I've got. Thank you. Madam Mayor and Council, I'm Doug Jones, and I'm the president of the Forestville Parks Foundation. And to caveat on what he's saying, I would like the council to consider giving us the opportunity. Obviously, we have to meet and as a board, make our decision as to whether or not we have the capability to do it. It would give us an opportunity to, to make some money and, and fundraise by having the Parks Foundation do all the legwork and give us enough time. And we meet the third Wednesday, so a couple of meetings now. If you would consider allowing us to do it, I'd appreciate it. Okay, then with that, I'm going to go on to number one, old business, consideration and action to approve the meeting minutes for regular council meeting on January the 8th, 2015. Madam Mayor, yes. I'd like to just make a, a small edit to the minutes under the citizens' out comments. Andy Jocelyn made a uh, wrote, or made comments regarding the product of an article in Wilson County News written by Fred Gonzalez. Read article about Fred, uh, Frank Villarreal. I think the article said that Frank Villarreal is the most decorated Vietnam War veteran 
in Floresville. If we could just add that to the to the minutes. And Fred, is that is what is that the article? Is that what it said? I said either one or the mother. Yes. If we could just add that to the to the minutes. <clears throat> With that correction, I'll move that we uh, approve the minutes. Second. There's a motion by Councilor Pinano, second by Councilor Lopez. Councilor Lopez, you Okay, now we're going to go on to item two, presentation and discussion. We're going to start with A, Cycle Ranch events. Mr. Wright. Madam Mayor and Council Members, thank you for seeing me today. Um, I've got a presentation I hope each one of you have in front of you, and it's to discuss getting some support from the Hotel Motel PAC to promote one of the events that we'll have coming this Memorial Day weekend. I've only got 10 minutes here, and that presentation's actually 12 pages, so I'm gonna kind of breeze through some of the, the highlights on it, um, and then just get to the meat of it, and give you guys a little bit of time to, to answer any questions. So, for starters, I don't know how many people have been out to Cycle Ranch. It's, now it's just under 200 acres of a facility. Um, it's not just a motocross track anymore, it's become more of an event center. We hold some different types of events out at the track. Um, it's only 90 minutes from Austin, it's just 45 from downtown San Antonio. We've been tracking a lot of individuals from all over the state as well as around the country. And really what I'm trying to do is bring events that are going to bring individuals that help the tourism of, of uh, Floresville and really put us on the map. It's been very successful for the motocross community, and we're world known motocross wise. Um, people from around the world travel to, to race motocross. We have people from Brazil all the time, from Mexico, from Canada. We have some people actually from Finland that just blew up flying. I just had somebody coming today from, uh, from Pennsylvania. And I want to keep expanding that reach by building some bigger events that drive revenue for the town of Floresville. The next page on uh, the proposal is just an overview map of the facility to give you guys a little idea of what we have in terms of infrastructure and why these events work to have at Cycle Ranch. And then the next page is actually the schedule for 2015. Now, a real interesting thing when I started putting this proposal together was I realized that across the year, just the events that we have booked, we should have about 62,000 people coming into Floresville just to visit our park, which is a huge driver of individuals um, coming spending their money at the local businesses as well as the hotels and motels. A lot of our events are multi-days, so we can only capacitate about 30 RV spots and some dry camping, and we really built the hotels. Um, the, last, uh, well, the last event on here is the King of the Dirt, which is actually presented by West Coast Customs. If you guys ever saw Pimp My Ride, they're actually going to be giving out um, a custom van at the event, we have a really large pro purse to attract some of the best riders in the country to come on out. And we want to add some more um, events that attract to larger audiences. So we're going to be putting in some live music. Um, we're in talks right now with Red Bull about doing a pre-game X Games show, um, which will really drive a lot of people come down from Austin and San Antonio area. And then uh, doing some family games, family events. Um, we have a playground out there already. We'll have a BMX track set up, a root beer garden, a game room, 
all kinds of things to bring the community out to Cycle Ranch as well. So it's not just the people that are traveling, but the local community. And uh, potentially fireworks as well. It's going to be on Memorial Day weekend, which is kind of an exciting day to, to have a fireworks display and absolutely drives a lot of individuals uh, to come on out and enjoy the festivities. And if we want to put to the next page here, we'll have the, uh, the economic impact. And this is where it gets really exciting because when I first started putting together this proposal, I had no idea what I was doing. I've never been to a council meeting nor presented at one. And when I started looking at the numbers and actually the impact we have uh, here in Floresville already, I got really excited. And then when I started comparing to some other events out there that are similar or different, the amount of economic impact that these types of tourism has is much greater than I even realized because I live in my little bubble of Cycle Ranch. When I started seeing how much people spend when they come here um, or go to any destination, I realized that we're really kind of a, a, a golden gem here. Uh, to have this in, in Floresville. So, across, across the board, um, we're looking at, with the 62,000 people, 4.6 million in, in revenue. And that's, that's a huge number to bring into to a small town. And, and I think we can do a lot better and we're gonna be continuously growing the events that we have, our annual events. Every year they get bigger. The infrastructure that I put in um, really helps to accommodate all types of people. If you look at Daytona Beach, that rally brings in $600 million in revenue. Just that bike rally they have in Daytona Beach. Sturgis, they're looking at $1 billion. And if you know anything about Sturgis, it's not a very big place. Um, I, I know we're not there yet. We're going to be bringing that this year. But, but I do see that in, in the future we can continuously grow on top of that $4.6 million number. And that's what really made me very excited about this. The real big piece is that we do these events and they're multi-day. In, uh, in 2014, we worked with La Quinta to track and did a dis discount code for riders coming to Cycle Ranch. And we put 271 um, heads and beds, just of what we tracked for that hotel alone. So there's a, a significant overflow that people didn't know about the discount code and obviously to the other hotels. When we have events, you see the, the trailers and the cars and the bikes parked. You know that we're driving a lot of people to Floresville from Dairy Queen to Sonic to Whataburger to the hotels, and that's what that you know, tax is really meant for. So for this event, I really want to bolster it and bring a lot of people from outside the Floresville community, working with the chamber already in the south side of uh, San Antonio uh, and um, a lot of other organizations and individuals that actually have uh, a name for themselves here in Floresville. I've been already working with Shadow Harris, um, who we all know here in Floresville, and he's going to be coming out to some events and doing some speaking, and um, it's just a really exciting opportunity for the, the town of Floresville. So if we want to get to the next page here, um, it just talks a little about the facility and what we have. Um, we have a very large pavilion. We have a PA system that actually broadcasts on FM just in, in that area. Um, we have 30 RV spots, a uh, three-quarter acre pond. We have built-in showers and uh, restrooms, as well as additional porta potties, playgrounds, multiple motocross tracks, um, Wi-Fi across the facility. A lot of things to make it so that it's exciting for people while they're there and they don't feel like they're disconnected when they left the big cities. And, and people really, really appreciate that. The, uh, the next page just talks a little bit more about the the actual facility and what's in the area. Um, a lot of the, this proposal I actually send out to different music production companies, music festival companies um, that I'm working with. We just actually got a, uh, an event with Ansira, which is gonna be a, a barbecue cook-off, a car show, as well as live music with um, a really big headliner. I can't say yet who it is, but he had six um, number one hits um, in the state of Texas on the charts in country music. So we've, we've, uh, we've got some really cool things going and we're going to bring somebody like that in for this event as well. And the real big piece and the real difficult thing for me is I spend a lot of money to produce the events and when it comes to marketing them, I end up getting tapped and put on really good shows and they're growing, but they're not growing with the, the speed that, that we really could see if we had a little help in the marketing area. So uh, we have a cafe on site as well. 
we have the HEB here, which a lot of people stop at, camp, camp at or we have people that camp out and they have uh, barbecues, so people will stop at HEB and Walmart and get their food for the weekend or, or use our cafe. Now just so you guys know, um, if you want to switch to the next page, it talks a little bit about the, the improvements that I've made to the facility in the last two and a half years. I'm very, very committed to making this successful. I've spent well over $2 million improving the facility and really helping to grow it and building the events that I have right now. So I'm really just looking for a little support from the town, um, ways to get integrated more of what you guys are doing here, and, and a way to work with the community to keep growing this. And with a little bit of a, a shot in the arm, for lack of a better term, I think we can be very, very successful at, at doing that. So the next two pages is actually the milestones um, from 2012 to uh, the end of 2014. And then the next page actually has a little demographic, so the reach that we have um, in the 90 mile radius. This is very exciting to people producing events to realize we can reach this many people. And this is the area that we're going to go after for the Kings of the Dirt event. Um, for the spectator portion, for the, the rider portion and the entertainment portion, we're going to be attracting people from around the country. Mr. Greg, what day is that going to be on? That's Memorial Day weekend, which is the 22nd to the 24th. Is that a big event that you're going to want to sponsor? Or yes. Okay. That's the event I want to get some support with. So what I'm going to do with the, 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 um, the, the sponsorship is use it solely to promote the event. And the next page has just a breakdown of what I'm going to be doing. 30% um, of it I'm going to use for general public print. Um, and that's all your current magazines, um, newspapers, everything where people go to see what events are going on. And then the next 30% will be for the industry specific and that's all the motocross, the freestyle motocross, the events that we have going on, um, advertising directly to people that attend specific band and getting really integrated with that. Working with Viacom on a couple of things, as you might have seen, just got a pretty large billboard right over the car wash here on 181. And then 20% in radio, which is pretty exciting because now that we've got the event with Ansira, they're actually going to be simulcasting from our location, which is only one week beforehand. Um, I believe they're going to be using uh, KJ97 to be simulcasting and talking to their dealership. So it's going to give us a little boost before the event, which is really exciting. And then we'll have a pretty large turnout for that event and be able to really pump up uh, the following weekend at Cycle Ranch Memorial Day. And then 20% is it's probably the part that I'm most excited about is the interactive. That's what I've got the most experience in. That's, that's how I built my, my business that allowed me to have the finances to purchase the property and, and do the improvements that I had. And um, really what's allowing me to fund this right now is, is from an online advertising agency I built and sold uh, in New York in 2006. Um, the final page here is just my contact information if any of you guys want. Uh, Want to get in touch with me for further questions after tonight. And I'm looking for $30,000 to, to, to use for promotions. I like the idea about bringing people to Florida. I've been talking about that for 10 years, making Florida well a destination city. The one question or one concern is how do we bring people to your event and also? If we're talking about 62,000 people, how do we bring them in maybe to the downtown area or bring them to our event center? How do we combine forces to make your event work and also to bring people into our town to look, eat at our restaurants, shop at our, our stores downtown, or visit our event center, have music out there? How can we make those, those things happen here? That's, that's this, this is more than likely an annual event? Yes, yes. Okay. For people to have in mind, okay, in May, we're going to go to, to the motocross in Floresville. And for that to be a, a repetitious thing that's going to happen every May, how can we partner for, for right now? Your demographics, you say, are, are the age is 34, $70,000 a year. Are we talking about uh, professionals or what, what are the, what do you see as, as your clientele? Yeah, well, well, motocross, you got two parts there, so I'll answer the, uh, the, the demographics first. The two parts, um, I'm sorry, the, the motocrossers, it's not, a, not an inexpensive sport, and these individuals have large RVs, trailers, and oftentimes 
Um, so they, they'll have a higher household income, and uh, that's the main driver of revenue right now for Cycle Ranch. Now, what I'm really ultimately trying to do is to get this to become more of a spectator supported uh, event where you'll have those individuals that will come in and not be there just for the motocross, but be there for the entertainment of it and then be able to come downtown to the event center. And it's actually something that I've been thinking about since I got here because Lawrenceville has so much going on. I, I'm always amazed when I drive down, down here and I see that we have tennis courts and we have skate park and we have, we have several parks, we have the event center. Not many towns of this size have all these amenities. And I've really reached out to a lot of the business owners to see how can we you know, work together and have had really mixed results. And I, I'm really, I love more suggestions on how to get people out downtown. Um, I think we could do something with Arcadia if, if they wanted to show a movie at our event or do something where um, it drives people back to watch movies because you guys have a uh, movie theater that does first runs. I know that already a lot of people leave our facility to come out and dine. If we could partner with the restaurants to get them to uh, maybe do a little pamphlet and we'll just have a little breakdown of the town of Floresville that we can hand out as people come through the gate because people are going in and out all the time. I and mean, they come to the, the franchises, they go to the Dairy Queens, they go to the Sonics. Uh, but to get them downtown, I think, would be a, a huge way to bolster um, the area right, right, right behind you. So I don't have a perfect answer for you, but I'm, I'm all for it. So Every event that happens on a Saturday or on a Sunday? Or this event is going to be Friday till Monday. Okay. So if there's anything going on in the, the, the event center, I would you know, love to be part of that. I think that we well, could... You downtown and outdoor I'm sure your clientele would appreciate a, an outdoor concert under the tree right here. Yeah, um, we, could, we could do an outdoor concert or we can do... Um, something like registration at the event center, one of the local businesses, so people have to come through and they're just put foot, foot traffic right here downtown as long as we have a location to use, would be uh, probably the easiest way to do it. People come here and they get their tickets, they do their ticket pick up here before they get to the facility. And that will help us with these larger events that you know we have, uh, we have about 70 acres that we can park in for the larger events, um, but it would be a, really nice to be able to get people completely ticketed before they even get to the facility. I like for the people to have a mindset. We already have the mindset in October, people are coming to the Florida Lopina Festival. In December, we were establishing, people are coming down for our night parade and for our holiday extravaganza. And hopefully we can relive that. I like the idea for a Memorial Day weekend, together with your event, that Florida was the place to be for that particular weekend. Yeah, I, I, that's exactly what I'm, I'm looking forward to. I know it's not an action item, but I think if we could partner with your event and working somehow with downtown, bringing your clientele to, uh, to the Floresville area, downtown area, I think it'd work. It can work. Uh, and yes. establish maybe a five-year five -year plan. I'm, I'm really on board with that. So just whoever would like to talk to me about it, who has that up here, and I'd um, love, to, love to integrate that with not just this event, but all of our other events as well. Because exactly. we have some really large things coming up, and, and I'm just kind of getting going. My, my first two years here was really building the infrastructure so that spectators could come out to the track. And it wasn't just like, this is a dusty place to be. Now I've actually got uh, the cafe, which has a catwalk that overlooks the racing. Um, we have the night track, we have a large pavilion, and we have, we have a lot of things set up as far as infrastructure. And it's, now it's go time. You know, you're talking about a big country store. Can you imagine your country store at your event and maybe some country store here downtown on a Friday night? You know, and, and market it that way. People will be here, stay in the motels, make it a whole weekend. I think we need to sit down and have lunch. Okay. <laughs> I like the fact that you that came up. That you broke down. That you just out here asking for thirty thousand dollars to go out and go for You know, we both break it down. Uh, and I don't think anybody that's that's in the racing world doesn't hasn't heard about Forest or the race track. Without I see them just going back and forth. And, and from the information you've given us, uh, you've uh, you've uh, you've done your homework. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to come here and, and waste anybody's time. And when I was looking at this, I'm, I like I said, I got really excited because I didn't really know how this stuff was all going to shake out. I mean, I used a number I think of seventy-five dollars per person that came through to spend in in, in Floresville, 
And uh, some of the numbers I saw, San Antonio uses $463 per person that comes in on tourism. So I went really low on this, and uh, I really hope that the impact is much, much higher. But um, I, I went to all my research, and then I just took the lowest number because I, I was pretty astounded by the impact that we have here. I'm pretty excited by it. Well, let's find a way to work it work together with uh, with the downtown area. All for it. Okay. Um, Mayor, if I may. Now, um, I've met with Mr. Graham on several different occasions, so we can pick it together uh, for a CNA action on the next city council that we need, and that's what I'm um, uh, giving the consensus for. Because it's in May and it's, it's time to yeah. So we can have a uh, CNA action and. Um, so if we just if the customer is saying enough to that going forward, I would like to bring it to the city council if you like. For for CNA, right? There was a comment there, Mayor. Uh, yes, what day is this again? It's Memorial Day weekend. Okay, let's not forget about the veterans because you know there's about a lot of veterans here and if you make a veteran umbrella, you get a lot of more people here. You're not the parade that weekend, aren't you? I'm sorry? You're putting on the parade that weekend, aren't you? No, that's Armed Forces Day. Oh, I thought I was hearing that you were volunteering. <laughs> Armed Forces Day, because it's like a week, uh, weekend before they get it. But I know that we got a lot of veterans here, like um, uh, Shadow, uh, Wounded Warrior. We got a lot of warriors here. And that like to bring a lot more people here, too. So don't forget about those veterans that can support you and stuff like that. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, we actually, all uh, service members are buy one, get one free. So. That's one way we kind of get back. We also have an event called the Rally Race of Heroes, which is on July 4th, um, which actually last year we did uh, a fundraiser for the Center for Intrepid. And this year I believe we're going to do Fisher House, but we've got a couple different sponsors we're talking to. And if, if somebody's going to really support the event, we might go with one of their charities. What time do your events start? In the morning? Yeah, the, the um, racing for motocross. Um, we'll start at 9 a.m. every morning. Uh, they have a practice session that starts at 8, and the race starts right around 9 when that gets over. If I can make a suggestion, when we had Senator Cruz's father here at the event center to promote the restaurants, for everyone that came in, they got a ticket. And I went to all the local restaurants and said, would you give a discount if they present that ticket, if they come? And they did, and the restaurants did a great business from that. Just a suggestion. Yeah, I actually um, spoke to a few restaurants when I first got here, and they were a little apprehensive. So we kind of just put it to the side for now. But that's certainly uh, something, that would, especially with your support, that I think that they'll jump on board with. Just a suggestion. Don't bring Senator Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a free country. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, we basically took a, a Google satellite image and then turned it into more of like a cartoon map that you would get when you went to any other type of uh, event location. So you, people could find their way around and where the bathrooms were, the playground, and so forth. I like the idea. Have you had an opportunity to get information on return on your on the city's investment so far, wherever you've held it before, or is this the first time? This specific event is a first time event. Um, and the only thing that we can really point to is the numbers of people that come through the, the facility and kind of average it out to what they should be spending um, in the city. And that's where I got that 4.6 million number. Mr. Grego, you've had some events that have been televised? Before my time. Before your time. Yeah, yeah. There, there, are, there are some we're talking about in the future, but um, I'm not close enough to, to say that it's a done deal. I don't want to talk about things until I know that for sure. So the one fee that you would charge includes all of the events, because I remember I have a niece who went to this in the mud. I mean, she said she went to a mud event, so I'm, I'm imagining that it was here. So, but if they're there for that event, and you have others, does that one price include all of them, or are they separate? That's a really good question. For the most part, it includes all of them. Um, the, the one fee to come in is, is I believe it's $10. Um, 
if you get a three day pass, so it'll be thirty dollars for the weekend. Otherwise, I think it's fifteen dollars a day. Um, we're still finalizing pricing on some of the, the other pieces where we might have uh, the video games. You play unlimited, and you would pay a little extra for that. Um, we have a few other things that are coming out potentially remote control cars, where you'll actually get a car from Traxxas to use, and you might might have to rent that car. Uh, but for the most part, it's included. If you're if you're a racer, you're going to pay to race a separate fee. If you're going to practice on one of the tracks, you'll you'll pay to practice on the track. But that's really for the the riders, not the spectators. The music, everything else is is all included in the park entrance. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 There's just so much here, and it's crazy that people don't even know. And when I first got here, people have been racing at Cycle Ranch for 10 years. They didn't even know there was a movie theater. They didn't even know there was a downtown. And I was like, floored by it, because most facilities like this, they're usually a little bit smaller, they're farther out in the country, and it's not a, a downtown area for people to go do things. And honestly, it's, it's nice to get some people to, to actually have leave the facility and come back for the nighttime, uh, you know, going to the restaurants, going to movies. And, Makes it a little bit easier to manage at the event. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Gray, for your support in, into our our city. I know we have seen you at a lot of fundraisers, a lot of uh, uh, special events. Yeah, well, I'm really excited to be here. I'm I'm from New York, so I'm a Yankee. I, you guys all make fun of me for it. I live in South Beach, so two big cities, and then uh, ended up here in Floresville, and, and uh, I'm right at home. So thank you very much for your time. Have a great night. Okay, next we're going to go on to item 2B, Parks Foundation, Trail Ride, March the 7th, 2015. Mr. Robles? <coughs> But uh, this tour ride that I'm, um, I'm in the process of uh, doing right now is going to be for March the 7th. What we're going to do, we're going to um, camp out up there at Whiteside uh, Fuel Stop on March the 6th. March the 7th, we're going to leave at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning and we're going to come into Floresville probably about, uh, probably about 5, 5.30 in the evening. Uh, it's going to be a long day ride. It's probably about 25 miles, but uh, people have been riding for a while, they already got set so it doesn't make a difference. <laughs> so, it's a, it's, a, it's a good thing, yeah? Uh, but all I'm asking if y'all can come out and support us, it'd be a, a good thing if y'all want to come out and ride. I, got, I already have a horse for the city manager, and Mary, you want a horse, we'll get you one too. No wagons. <laughs> and, you know, and that's, that's all the fun of it, you know, it's riding and having fun. You have to ride all day, just off and on, because we're going to ride for a while, we're going to stop. Um, and take a break and, and use the restroom and stuff. At noon, we're going to stop at, at La, uh, Laguna Cafe and we're going to have lunch there. It's going to be a bologna cheese and chips, a light lunch, and we can keep on riding. So, you're welcome to stop by there too if you want to. And then in the evening, we're going to uh, end up over behind the Civic Center, the Roping Arena, and we're going to have dinner uh, there. And probably just kick those dirt a little bit for a while, so, you know, and that's about it. So, Again, um, I don't know if you have the, the list, uh, the time zone and stuff like that. You, you can enter the trail ride anytime. And friends or neighbors, they, want, they can't get up in the morning, they can show up anytime. And we'll get them in there and then when we stop at noon, we'll just go ahead and tag them and stuff like that. Um, and then, of course, you've got to have the, the registration for any accident stuff and everybody signs it. And then the other one is just a waiver in case something happens. You know, that's the way you can say that they, they knew they were aware that they're responsible. Things. But again, that's that's what they did. Liars, Dean, I am up there. I'll have them. You just let me know. But I'm looking right now, probably about 100 horses. Maybe we'll get more, I don't know. Uh, the, the actual uh, the troll group that I ride with, they, they go into Zapata County this weekend. They have another troll right there. 
but we can't split it in half. So you know, we're going to have to get it over. So. Can I ask what a cognitive is? A cognitive is a test on the horses. They get, every year they get a test, and, and it's just like a, the West Nile uh, disease or a virus. That's what it's like. So you don't be, um, you know, having other horses get it to the next. That's a mandatory state, mandatory thing. And you're going to have it. And if you don't have it, it's fine. It's like the insurance for the park. How much you expect to raise? Uh, well, <clears throat> early pre-registration twenty-five dollars. Late registration, which is the day of, is twenty-five dollars for grown-ups and kids. It remains the same, fifteen dollars. So about twenty-five hundred for the day. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, we hope. And then it depends on the weather. If it's going to be raining or snowing or what, you know, we, we don't know what. We don't know. Yeah. It's Texas. <laughs> it's Texas, so yeah. But some of these guys are tough, they want to ride, and some guys they just don't want to ride. But you know, it depends on the weather. And that's, that's what we like to base ourselves on. So, again, y'all, you know, like I said, you, you got that time or something, you know, we'll be coming 181 all the way down. You know, to, to close it. So, any questions? Thank you for your part, parts. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to go on to item 2C, which is our City Streets Project Update. Alex? Alex is our supervisor. Yeah. 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 One of the reasons, and you'll start seeing this too before the council again, um, you all were nice enough to send me to Austin uh, to a conference for city managers for the state of Texas, and part two is going to be next month in San Antonio. Uh, one of the things they talked about was communication, uh, better communicating to the council, not only for city managers, but also for the staff. So what we're having tonight is two departments to come and present to you, uh, update on projects as we're coming forward, as we get ready for the spring. Of course, streets are all important to everybody, as well as parks, but we want to start uh, having them tougher present on city projects that are pending, city projects that are open, uh, just to give an update. And I talked to the Chief of Police today, and he'll be coming before you on the 12th. So this way, not just me standing here saying what they're doing, you can ask those questions, interface, and give them the opportunity to communicate to you directly, as I have that opportunity all the time. So please forgive us as we set up our technology. And this is uh, Alex's presentation. <coughs> December, we had a crew of about six guys uh, went through some uh, maintainer operation training through uh, TEKS uh, at our uh, county, at our city yard out on Park 36. Uh, it was very, very helpful. It was a good, it was a good program. Uh, we also we completed. I'm waiting on one sign still for River Bend subdivision. We've completed the installation of all the majority of the new signs out there so far as the streets are up to date right now out there. Alex, you want to speak to the turnaround, the turnabout that's there? They're at River Bend. Uh, yeah, they were, uh, Mr. Richie, was his name? Richard Coons. Coons. Uh, they, they've had a big concern with the, the circle traffic there. Um, we, we, we got the signs up. I've sat out there for a couple of minutes here and there. They are working. Uh, their biggest concern was the main Riverbend Parkway coming up to the up to circle, draw up to the circle, which is Seguin Circle. Uh, you've got a lot of traffic running from in the wrong direction to Club Drive, which is the road that goes actually goes to 
uh, loose to the restaurant. It's short of it. It, yes, it is, but that's not the correct <coughs> way to go. Um, they, they all spy. Uh, the last signs we went and put up there were they had. We put up a couple of signs. Three days later, they stole them. We went and replaced them, and I had the the golf course manager show up out there, and he said that he'd spent several hours from the time that we put up the, the signage for the circle <coughs> and noticed that people are people do really pay attention to the signs. Uh, there, of course, there are those few. I hope it's not the mayor, but uh, that that do make that shortcut. And I can honestly say too, before I put those signs up, I made that shortcut too. But uh, they're they're up. They're very pleased with the signs. Are a little bit. They're, they look a little bit different than what our street signs look like here in town. Uh, but that was what was out there prior to us installing the signs. Um, right now, we're also in the process of, we've, got a, we've had a lot of leaks throughout town, and we're in the process of repairing all of those, those patches, potholes throughout citywide. Uh, actually, I worked till five, a little bit after 5.30 today, we had another leak on First Street. Uh, that's in the process. Again, this, this is all, the repairing of the streets is all weather permitting. Uh, tomorrow we will not be doing anything on the streets. I can tell you that right now. It's going to be too cold. But uh, that's moving along fairly well. Yeah, thanks. Sir. Uh, I have a question on those uh, potholes, uh, repairs. Uh -huh. What's the process? Uh, the process is getting them repaired back to the street. Uh, we go in once, if, if, it's, if it's a pothole from, or a patch rather, made by from a water leak where the water department has come in and repaired a water line we go in and saw cut the, the asphalt to square okay. of course depending on the size of the actual dig and uh, it goes back the same way it was base uh, my my six inches of base subgrade six inches of base and two <coughs> inches of asphalt and after that after that that's 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 it after the asphalt do you all tap it Yes, it's tamp. It's tamp. We have a tamper. Yes, it is. We use our steel roller. Sometimes, a lot of times, on the bigger patches, we will use our steel roller. We have a gas-powered uh, tamp that we also use. Yes, the the asphalt's not tamp. The subgrade and the base is tamp. Thank you. Uh, again, weather. Again, weather permitting. I do intend on starting as close to the beginning of next month as possible on the, the street projects, which we was approved, I'm not sure when, of uh, the nine or 10 roads that, are, are, that were proposed, uh, that the seventh to trail from Standish, trail to sixth and seventh, uh, south, all of those right there, south third, How many have been uh, completed? None. None. So, uh, the first two, the first three, have have been based. They've been based. I'll go back. I'll go back. That, those are the first. The, that order that you see there is the order that I'm going to do the the repair, the restoration on. Um, starting on we South Seventh Street to Standish has already been already been based. We've got I gotta go back and do a fine, what we call a fine blade finish. And once that fine blade is finished, that's gonna take me roughly about anywhere from uh, 12 to 16 hours. And after that's completed, we'll right after that's completed we're gonna go back on top with our black top asphalt. Are all streets gonna be curved? No sir. I thought they were supposed to from my understanding no. Um, traditionally, the city has not, the city staff does not, has not done curbing at all. Um, according to what they did for the street, you have to prepare the streets that were in existence when they passed the tax, but does include sidewalks and during the curbing as well. So we have to go back at a later time to do the curbing. Now, I know the city of Floresville had a habit or a practice of having the owner 
curb, it's part of the curbing, but you shouldn't do that. It, it is a public improvement, and it should be provided for the city. So at the later date, if you want to go back and curb, we would have to outsource that. That's not something we can do in-house. I think the curbing was on any new street that was any brand new street that comes forward, it will automatically have the curbing. As you'll see in River Bend, they'll have the curbing because it's a brand new street. This is what actually is retrofitting existing streets. Is it a south side thing? And uh, what is it? See, they weren't new. They, they, they were curbed. By the they were, they were curbed by the previous administration, that was, that was and it was outsourced. We didn't do it in house. It's always been outsourced. Right. Yeah. Because so we didn't, we don't, we didn't out, we, staff did not do those. That was outsourced and contracted out. It's a good, it's a good idea to go back and, and, and curb all the streets that are being fixed. fixed. Yes, what sir. Is, and we'll bring those numbers to you. Okay. We'll have That's, to have someone to, to do the bidding and the engineer to write it up and to do the bidding and we can bring those prices back to you. Okay. And are we looking at the infrastructure below the street? Uh, yes, sir. The subgrade, yes. Yes. Yeah, you have to. The subgrade. No, uh, he's, he's speaking about right. the sewer line. The water and sewer, yeah. Oh, yes. You can only yes. really check the sewer lines. The lines. sewer lines is what's really checked. Because your water no, lines are charged. It has water in them. There's no way to check the water line. But your sewer lines have had the survey as well as the camera used for them. How many? Oh, so because when the, uh, I know you two were on the council, but that was one of the things I know the councilman was brought forth, and I definitely know the mayor brought forth to that. And reference to we want to make sure that we don't fix the street and then have to, two weeks later, one week later, dig it up to, to do a repair. So we've cameraed them, we've made some adjustments in reference to the order. The streets department has worked with the uh, water department as well as the sewer, so we can make sure that we can address those issues. Why are, why are some of these streets not in the in the street maintenance plan that was provided? I mean, are, are we kind of no, hopping all, around and... No, all these streets were mentioned in NS. Yeah, and our community yeah, yeah. they were listed as a, one of the, they had them in red, they had different color, and red across the, these were all the streets. In there. We could not do all of them, but these were definitely the ones that we pulled out of in that study. There's plenty more to do. Um, we have additional funding, but we want to try to have success in reference to that. Um, and it's two streets that, uh, the street over there by the ice machine, I don't know what street that is, 10th, uh, C. Yeah. C. C. Are we doing that one? That's not on the, that's not that on the. That one meets I agree that's uh, attention. I agree. That's also, the street right behind the, or the auditorium, the high school it's auditorium. Railroad. Is that one on there? Yeah, that's not on there either. That, that, that was a terrible. That was well, bad. Let me bring up something. I, I, I briefly met, talked to Ms. Turner about this a few days ago. Um, with regards to, if you go back, Ms. Turner, <laughs> Blue Jay. I don't know if you, you're all familiar with Blue Jay. It's, it's out on, on, on 181. Uh -huh. Uh, myself and my crew went and surveyed that street two weeks ago, and uh, it, it's in fairly good condition. That street, I, I don't have, I don't remember the exact number on what the cost is for that street, uh, but uh, square footage-wise, it's very close to what Railroad Street is. Okay, Back so here, we could reverse it. What, what we, what. What I discussed with my crew, and I briefly discussed it with Ms. Turner, is that if, if we just go and do some minor repair to Blue Jay and, and reseal coat it, that, that's going to save, save me a lot of money, which in turn I can take that money and use for railroad. That would be good. Because I, I know railroad, I drive that street fairly often, picking up my kids from high school, and uh, it is... As we know, it, it's it's in desperate need. And that's where we have our Chamber of Commerce building, right? Exactly, yes. yes. Chamber, the Chamber just moved there recently. I mean, yes, the back season. in November. I and that I major cut that happened was to put the water connection, the sewer connection to that property. So what we wanted to do is that we've had some delays in getting started. We had to purchase some equipment, a, roll, uh, a roller in 2015, a front loader in 2014. And then, of course, we had to have training on the maintainer. And so we wanted to have some success. And he's done, like I said, he started with two streets, so we want to have some success. And he did mention to me as we had, were preparing for tonight that we may just do something different to Blue Jay and move another street up. But as we go forward, we want to, repeat, we want to report to you that the streets are done and moving forward, Good. and then we can see that progress. So that's what we're hoping to do. Right. Yeah. Railroad, does it have bus traffic on there? Yes. School oh. bus traffic? Yes. Yes. Because yes. I think that we can approach the school and maybe they can piggyback with us. Half and half and get it that way.
No, you're using tax money. I can't use tax money with school money. You know, we just let them fix it. It's your street. They have street. <coughs> it's your street. Can you use school tax or sales tax? So how do we do it whenever we want? The county pays tax? Yeah. Well, that's that creates me, but that's a county road and we're supposed to be used for existing streets that were done with a tax pay. So we started a new money, new bank, and you have to do things within the city. It has to be within the city limits. And you have to use the existing streets that are working on. Like Mr. Turner said, we purchased the roller, we purchased the front end loader. Uh, I have some of the materials already in our yard for the previous street work that we were just speaking of. Uh, uh, and that's things, just the base material. They're brand new equipment, and so those are usually uh, primarily for the streets department because we use street funds to purchase right. that. And so uh, our comptroller will be tracking and use it for any other thing, but primarily those are used for street activities. And I think it's keeping it pretty busy. Yes? Yes. Okay. Some of our safety equipment, <coughs> um, some stuff, just stuff that we use every day. And, uh, it's purchased periodically. Our vests don't last forever. Gloves don't last forever. Yeah, our head? Yes, sir. It's just being implemented. Yeah. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we had enough safety equipment. Uh, that part of their training on the maintainer included safety. Um, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but my HR person is preparing a safety training manual for you all to review. We're hoping that we can get that done in this fiscal year as well as update on the personnel handbook which you're trying to have. So, so this includes eye protection as well? Eye protection gloves, hard hat, vest, that they are going to be in a construction site, construction uh -huh. road, they'll be dressed perfectly and have all the safety mechanism in, in place. Yeah. Alex, uh, sure. during the summer, we're going to need more employees to complete more uh, roads rapidly than that. I, I've not brought it up because I, I know where my budget's